You're listening to the OK Dad podcast. Please leave your message for Oh oh daddy. Oh daddy. Hi daddy. OK Dad podcast. Let's start this thing. Can you not put that on YouTube? You're listening to my husband talk a lot. All right, and welcome back to another episode of OK Dad. I know it's been a minute. Every time I try to put some time aside to put into the project, it just gets lost with work, life, kids, everything in between. Uh, something that's been on my mind lately has, uh, I guess, just involving work is is work ethic. So I'm trying to get uh, some kind of idea of everybody or like the current situation of some everybody's like work ethic so far, like how somebody sees themselves as like working or what is a work ethic or how much effort should I put into a job or how much effort should I put into something that I am wanting to do, whether it be a task, whether it be a job, whether it be just like self goals and just going to explain a little bit about my life. I, I felt like I put in a decent amount of work. I don't think that I am the type of person that is 1000% dedicated to something. I, I don't think I could be a doctor if I wanted to be a doctor. I don't think I have that kind of work ethic to put 10 plus years just in schooling just so I can become a doctor and that's like a low level doctor. I know it takes like way more to be like a surgeon and stuff like a, a lot of stuff needs to go into that. So for myself was not like number one in my class, but I had a pretty okay work ethic, I think. I think uh, it it came pretty easy for me to just know that getting a B is is good enough in school. I wasn't a straight A student, never really strived to be. I know early on when I got some C's, I noticed that my parents were pretty, pretty just disappointed. They weren't upset with me, I didn't really get punished. But they were just disappointed and I saw that, okay, like I don't want to disappoint my parents. It'd probably be better off just for everybody around if I got B's and A's. So early on I started getting B's and A's and it came pretty naturally. There was nothing too crazy in school. They weren't teaching us rocket science. And as I got older, I realized that I needed some more kind of stimulation. I was, I was always getting in trouble in elementary school anytime I just had a mouth on me so I was always talking back to teachers I was always talkative if I was always finished with my work and then I'd start annoying the person next to me or I start picking on somebody else and in middle school I kind of I kind of changed all that because there was one I kind of got scared straight my father took me to like a juvenile place and had me talk to one of the cops outside or one of the jury guys or um a jailer there, whatever you would call it. He had me talk to one of them, so it kind of scared me a little bit. I didn't want to end up there. I knew that was potentially a path, just being the neighborhood that I grew up in, the school system that I was in. I, I knew I, I realized, like, hey, I could end up here. And when I was in elementary school, we were right down the street from a middle school, the middle school I was going to. And being at that middle school, they had a theater arts program. And so they would come and perform their plays at the elementary school, which I thought was amazing. Like, hey, these guys are on stage. They're playing around. They're having fun. They're telling a story. And everybody's listening. And so, like, as a child, that's kind of what I wanted to do. I'm like, hey, I want people to, like, hear me when I'm on stage. And that sounds fun. And everybody looks like they're having a great time. So got scared straight. Went into middle school. And I applied to be in the theater arts program. Of course, it's theater arts, band, or art. And I got a slot in theater arts, and it was fun. It was cool. But then I realized, okay, like, it's the plays that you have to be in outside of school or at the end of school to then be a part of. And that's when I realized, like, going into it, you need to have a... a b a's and b's not a's but a's and b's passing you can't be failing in any classes and i'm like all right cool and then also you like can't be in trouble so you can't be going to the office which i was still going to the office quite a bit in the sixth grade 
And that's when I had to make a change because I knew I wanted to be in this. Like I played sports. I just played sports like in the neighborhood parks. We would go out to Ramirez Park, Palo Alto Park, play some basketball, play some football. But I never really wanted to join a, a team sport. Early on in my childhood, I played Little League and the parents would get so infuriated with the referee, the children. It just seemed like a, a really bad time. So I knew I didn't want to be a part of that. I didn't want to, I just did not want to be a part of that and have parents angry at me for something that like is supposed to bring fun. Aside from that, I, I joined theater arts and we started making theater and we started doing plays and I, I definitely was not the best actor. I was never like top actor. Um, I was never top like techie or anything, but I would give it my best shot. So like I would put hours of work trying to memorize my lines. I would be in my room. I'd be going over lines, going over lines. I'd memorize it and I'd do movements in, in my room. And I'd try to do it as much as I could and even after all that, I would I would then go back to rehearsal and there would there would be other people there showing emotion and flexion, just nailing every single scene. And and it was it was cool to be a part of that and see other people grow and then they ended up growing too in, in their roles and in, in, in theater arts, even throughout high school, some went off to college to perform too, and, and it was really nice to see. I was never that great. I think I was good. But even after like putting in that much work, you still can't always just be the best just because you put in that, that amount of work. And I felt like I was good enough to at least be in the same room as these, as these other thespians, as these other theater arts people. And that's, that, that was kind of like my calling during middle school and high school. That, that was one of the things I really enjoyed. After high school... I graduated with uh, some A's and B's, a pretty good regular average there. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing, nothing too too crazy the other end. And I went to college, and I went to college at UT for a year, and it was same thing there. Like grades were not super high. I wasn't like gonna be the next Einstein or something, but I wasn't failing out of college either. And that's when I realized like, hey, like I'm just, I'm not mature enough to be doing this right now. I'm not mature enough to be in college and focusing on my grades and stuff. I'm just, it's just not, I'm not into it. But I knew I wanted to join the military and I knew I wanted to do at least four years. So I decided to join the military like midway through my first year of college at UT. I joined and I knew I wanted to do something a little bit more than just being the regular big army. So I put in my application to go to airborne school and I got a slot and I, I actually, I think it was for RASP. I went and applied and I got it. So it was in my contract to go to RASP. So I had to go to airborne school first and go to RASP. And I was, did I have never had any kind of like actual training so I knew that in RASP you had to do at least um, a forty uh, a five mile run in under forty or forty five minutes at the time. It was the it was the Ranger APFT, and all I knew is like I can't run that fast. Let me start running five miles a day, a day until I can get under that time, and I was like I didn't know anything about working out. So I knew that was probably my biggest hindrance. So let me do that. Let me start there. And I, and I did. I ran five miles a day until I got to basic training. And I was, I was really fast at running. And I weighed still like 190, 200 pounds. And being in the Army, like that's pretty big. So I'm a, I'm a bigger guy being in the Army <laughs> at, at like the height that I'm at. And nobody, nobody like the drill sergeants, nobody believed that that was like my runtime. And during, during our first PT test, during our first physical training test, uh, I ran, it was, it was a down and back and I ran it. And when I finished with my time, it was around 12 minutes and nobody believed me. And I, I was like, what? I don't understand like why you guys think I'm lying. 
and it was a good time and i just didn't i just didn't know then that that was a good time and they're just yelling at me that i'm lying i'm like okay cool like i'm not sure why i'm being yelled at at the time and so then they just started going down the line asking other runners that were there that had already finished if i had passed them and everybody was like yes joe sergeant like Vasquez passed me pfc Vasquez passed me and they were like okay all right fine that's fine and i remember going to my ait training right after that and same thing we they had a track there in gosh fort gordon georgia they had a track there and we would run the track and they said we're going to run this once and then we're going to go back and so I went with them. They let us all run the track, and I finished it. And I said, okay, hey, Sergeant, like I finished. Where are we going now? And he just looked at me. He looked me up and down. He's like, you didn't run the track. And I told him, yes, I ran the track. Like you said to run it once, right? This is a starting point. It's a loop. And he didn't believe me, so he made me run it again. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll run it again. I ran it again, and I still feel like I still pass people. And then after that, like, he still didn't, like, I came back and I was like, hey, you said I ran it again. I ran it again. Like, are we going back? And, like, he was upset. He was upset that I did that. So next, after AIT, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go to airborne school and then I'm going to go to RASP. And during the end of AIT, I could not get my chin-ups or the pull-ups, right? I couldn't get seven of them and I know you needed to get that. And so, like, at this point, like, that's all I was doing. I was trying to get my chin-ups and my pull-ups down just so I can I can go through the assessment. And then the other thing was I can't, I can't, I'm not a strong swimmer. I can swim, but I can't, like, tread water with a rifle. So that's, like, been my only weakness is that, that water portion. And I just didn't feel confident in myself. And I was like, you know what? I can't, I'm, I don't feel confident. I don't think I'm going to pass that. And I don't want to, I don't want to go to airborne school and then fail out. So I opted out of it. I ended up going to a really high-speed unit. I really enjoyed it. And I think it was about maybe a year there. They ended up sending me to airborne school. And even then, to go to airborne school, you had to beat everybody in your section. You had to be pretty on top of it to get a slot. And my run time was under five miles, was under 35 minutes. My my push-ups and sit-ups were at like 90%. I never got like a perfect score on the the army PT test, but my runtime was always, I could always max out. I could always get a hundred percent on my runtime. And I went to airborne school. I passed airborne school, came airborne, did some jumps. And I always regretted like not putting in the effort to go to RAS. And I know that I had, I know that I had the work ethic to get there. I just didn't have like the drive, but it was great working with a bunch of those Ranger tab guys and working with some other guys from, from regiment. And, and I learned so much from them. And a lot of them too, that went to ranger school. They were like, no, you can, you would probably make it. You'd probably make it. Cause you got a lot of meat on you. You're fat. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, like I get what you're saying. Um, but it, a lot of the stuff they would tell me is like, it's stamina. It's, it's you, if you have a lot of stamina, you would be able to make it. All right, cool. A lot of them really good, really good dudes. And the the thing that i learned is like your work ethic it can get you places it can also like not get you places so that was that was one for me where i'm like you know i wanted to go i just didn't ha- didn't have the drive there I, I knew i could if like that's what i focused on but it, it just wasn't something that i wanted to like entirely focus on after that um got out decided hey yeah, i ended up getting uh, my associate's degree finishing up an associate's degree while i was in the army and i got out and i wanted to do something i wanted to work but i also wanted to finish up my degree because i you know it's been a minute it's been five years since i started college did a year of college four years in the army hey it's about time to finish a degree so i went back to college start i was like you know what let me just study something that i really like so i went into the criminal justice field and that to me is something that i i really truly enjoy is criminal justice and criminal well criminology is actually the degree that i got and so learning like that that psychological aspect patterns behaviors in criminology was really nice to learn and it came it came with ease i remember they do that trick where you have a little like 
five by eight card. Hey, you can have you can write whatever you want on this card and bring it in for the exam. And I didn't even fill up half of the first page, and people were looking at me like I was nuts. And they're like, this is one of the hardest professor series. This is one of the hardest class. And I'm like, dude, if you listen to her lectures, like, it's amazing stuff. And if you just listen to them, like, she said that you'll pass the class. And sure enough, like, once again, I didn't get a 100 on it, but I got an 85 with needing, like, very little notes. Like, I, if you enjoy it, it doesn't feel like you're putting in that much work. I enjoyed running. I enjoyed theater arts. It didn't feel like I was putting in that much work. I just enjoyed it. If you're enjoying it, the the work doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel so daunting. And after after that, I finished up my degree and I decided to like, hey, let me see if I can go and do something else. I want to kind of learn something else. So I joined the medical field. I joined... Um, a degree plan for becoming an LVN, so a licensed vocational nurse here in San Antonio, Texas is what it's called. I know they're called LPNs in other areas in the States, and I'm not sure what they are called overseas or anywhere else, but um, to be a nurse, essentially. And I started this, and I did a quarter, and it was the most extremely painful style of learning I've ever had in my life. It was totally different than the military, totally different from school from high school middle school learning it was totally different from college learning it was such a different experience for me learning that it took 100 percent of my time and i was i was this is actually how i met my wife because i was looking for recommendations on the school that i was going to and lo and behold i met my wife my future wife at the time and we fell in love but that's a different story for a different day and and that whole it was uh, it was for one semester and it was for three months and that whole time it was so excruciating to sit down and memorize everything for the body for just like one exam it took me maybe four or five hours a day for like five or six days straight to study for one test and i'm taking three or four three or four courses at a time there and that's how much time I was spending just on one course for one test for one week excruciating super daunting after that I was like you know what I don't know if I can do another another semester of this and I had six uh nine more months to go I don't think I can do it so I started looking for other jobs I knew I wanted to just do something and branch out and uh, a good friend of mine had given me um, some. He, he's given he gave some good kind of words so I can have like a shoe in for a job, and it was in the communications field, which is what I was in in the military. All right, cool. Like I think it's pretty easy, and it was uh, it was for installing like internet connections, satellites, basically setting up internet um, for houses that aren't in the city that had to do uh, line of sight satellite internet connections it was either that or this crazy new company that was three years old and ha- had an idea and wanted to go somewhere with it and I went and I got I, I had an interview with the internet company it was great I was waiting to hear an offer and then this other company came up and I'm like all right cool like it's got a position that I really want or it's got a position that nobody wants. And if I get that position, I can probably be in the company and then like thinking long term, maybe, you know, somewhere go somewhere with that company. So at the time, I'm like, all right, cool. It looks like I did both interviews. Didn't look like I was getting anything. Um, one, that Internet company was like, hey, it's it's 50 hours just mandatory a week so it's mandatory 10 hours over time we're going to pay you whether you do it or not but 50 hours mandatory okay cool and the other one was uh, a six to three shift and it was five days a week and at the time i didn't realize how flexible they were they were extremely flexible and um the same day i got i got an offer from the internet company which was the the pay rate was I think it was the same. I think it might have been even lower. 
and then I and then maybe a few hours later, I was driving with my wife. She was my wife at the time. I was driving with. I think she was my wife at the time. I was. We were driving down. We we're driving down Highway 90. We're going east, and then she tells me that the email says like, "Yeah, you have an offer," and I'm like, "What?" And yeah, the company gave me an offer and it wasn't for the one that I wanted to. It was it was for the job that nobody wanted and it was just cleaning cars. It was just washing cars and I was so stoked. I was like, this is it. This is this is where I want to work cuz personally, I would like to give a place at least 5 years and then you kind of get a real assessment on it. I know that's a, that's a huge, that's a long time. That's a really long time for us millennials. But I think a good three to five years at a company can give you a good feel of it there. And one, I've never felt trapped there at all. I've never felt like, oh my gosh, there's nowhere for me to go. There's nothing for me to do. No, I've like never felt like that. I think if I felt like that within a year or two, like I would have, I would have said like, hey, this isn't for me. Like, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. But no, it didn't feel like that at all. And I just started, I wouldn't even say grinding, but I was like putting in some work. We were cleaning cars. And like, if I was cleaning cars, just like I worked with everything else, like it didn't, it didn't feel like a job. It felt like I was working with friends, like we were trying to start a business. And I just, every car, I I washed it as if, as if it was my car. And I tried to do my absolute best on it. And I would keep track of like how fast I'm doing it. And then once I was finished, there was times where I only needed to do like three or four cars a day. And, and after I finished a car, then I would get it ready. I would get, I would load it up on a truck. Then I would, I would strap it down. And then I would start like just knocking out paperwork for that car that's going to go out. And I try to get everything done. So the person above me, which is like the role that I wanted in the first place, they wouldn't have to do anything but turn a key and then drive away. And so, like, once it got to that point, they were like, all right, hey, like, you missed this, or let's go back and look at the paperwork. And, like, awesome. Like, they're trusting me with all this. So when it got to that point, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I feel like they like me. They trust me. They, they want me to grow here. And then it just went from there. And, and like, it, I almost blinked. And five years later, like, I'm still with a company. Uh, it's They've been doing such great, amazing things. And I look back, and... And as big as this company's growing, like we still have people that are joining all the time and we have newer faces all the time there. And when I go and I look back and, and I see people that are asking like, hey, well, like this is the pay rate that I want and this is where I want to be at. Y- we always think like, you know, back in my day when I started, I was getting paid a nickel and I had to go uphill both ways to work and it was always raining and and I do I find myself seeing that now like hey like if just thinking in the back of my head like one like if you if you really want to be here and you want to be here long term like this is a great place to provide for your family like one let's just put in some work two like let's be bought into this like it shouldn't feel that daunting it shouldn't feel like work three like if you are here and you're just like grinding and you're just in there just trudging along like man like Maybe maybe you should find some some like spots for you that are a lot better than this, and I see that not just here but like everywhere. Like if you go into McDonald's, like there's people there that, yeah, like that's probably not the best job. And like my wife and I, even a lot of my friends, like try to leave bigger tips. We like try to be friendly, even like when an order's messed up. Like I know a ton of people who don't just like overreact and like throw stuff at them. But I was at FedEx the other day, and I I had an issue with my FedEx. And it, after after we got all that settled, I'm like, um, she she goes, "Do you want me to send it?" I was like, "Well, hold on. If that's gonna get there Tuesday, or if it's not gonna send until Monday, let me call this guy and see if he wants it that late, or if he wants me to just deliver it to him because he's in town." And so I step back. Two other gentlemen walk in. And then the the lady that I was just talking to that I stepped back from, she goes, oh, could you please put a mask on? And the guy immediately, volume at 10, I'm fully vaccinated. I don't need to wear a mask. President Biden said that we're good to not wear masks. And I'm just like, whoa. Like, hey, and she, she asked him, she's like, I didn't make the policy. And he's like, 
no, but then he just starts going off. And like to this woman here, there's two guys, there's one woman, and then I'm standing in the back, like four feet away from them. And I'm like, hey, dude, she didn't make the policy. She's She is not like Mr. or Mrs. FedEx, first of all. Like she's a human being. Why are we just yelling at somebody else that didn't make a rule here that's just trying to do her job? And he kind of like got thrown back a bit, like as if I was for or against the mask and I have my mask on. And I'm like, dude, she didn't make the policy. She's asking you to wear a mask because that's what it says on the door. She didn't write out that policy for you. Like, can you just give her a second? You're going to be in here for two minutes. And the dude calmed down, finishes up whatever he needs to. And I'm standing right there. And then the other guy behind him started talking to him like, just like gaslighting him up and like clapping him up like yeah man this is what needs to happen blah 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 dude i get it man everybody everybody's got opinions everybody's opinion maybe doesn't matter but like everybody's entitled to an opinion here in america freedom of speech right but to go at another person that violently it just it just never makes sense to me like why somebody's at work like why are you going to be that upset with them so they're just there working. Like I know there's jobs all over the place that just suck, but people were there working because they need a job. Some because they just want a job, you know, they just want to work. But anywhere we go, like there shouldn't be times where just we're just reacting to people like that. We need to listen a little bit more rather than just react to something. Which in this case, I felt like I did a pretty good job. I had a, another friend of mine post something like that on social media the other day that like, hey, we need to stop yelling at like clerks and cashiers and anybody else that's just doing their job because they legitimately did not make those policies for the place that they're working at. They are just trying to work. And granted, like when you're at places like that or if you're working through those places like that, like it's probably not where you want to spend the rest of your life working which is fine too. Like use that as a stepping stone, but don't treat a job or your work ethic. Like it's just something you have to do. Like it's not anywhere you're at. Like you can take that as an opportunity. You can grow from it. That like to me is a lesson right there. Like, Hey, no matter how much somebody's yelling at you, like if it's just work, like take that as an opportunity. Like, Hey, yeah, this person's yelling at me. They're being very vulgar. Like, how can I react better to this situation than just meeting that person with the same energy? I, I did receive a phone call to at work with somebody who was super upset. They called me a mother effing POS D sucking blah, blah, blah. It went on. And like, I got to give him props. Like, he did not use the same curse word twice in that, like, 10 word run on sentence of calling me out. And after that, like he's asking to talk to other people. And at this point I'm like, no dude, you're not talking to anybody else. The way you're talking to me, you're not talking to anybody else in this office like that. Like you're not talking to anybody else, but me, every time he calls in, you're going to get routed straight to me because of the way you're talking to me. You're not talking to anybody else. And when you do call in you do get upset, like, they're going to send you straight to me because I want to talk to you and I'm the only one that can resolve your issue. So like, let's calm down. And at the end of the day, he did, he calmed down. He wanted, he, he everything he wanted, I could, I could get done for him. And he kind of understood, like if he let me finish talking, I would explain the situation to him and I'd probably get 20% of the explain of the situation explained and he would hang up in my face and maybe like two days later, he finally let me complete the whole situation for it and then kind of understood and then allowed the, situ the situation to get resolved. And there's things like that where, no, don't hate my job. That's part of my job is dealing with people who are escalated. But learning to, to like face stuff like that and like react, but not just react in, in the same manner. And that's just, that's building on it because 10 years ago, I probably would, would have not acted like that. I probably would have met him with the same kind of energy, which not proud to say, but you know, we all grow up, we all mature. And that's one of the big things that I've 
worked on that I didn't even know I was working on. And you just have opportunities everywhere that you're at. And it's so bizarre to see in today's society that there's people that don't want to put in work. There's people that just want to be movie stars overnight, which granted, like it can happen, but like what's plan B or can that be plan B and then plan A be something a little bit more stable? It's kind of what I want to instill in my daughter, my sons is like, Hey, let's focus on plan A. When we get plan A, like all set down, like you want to be a YouTuber. All right go youtube like i'll back you up on that but let's max out your 401k first let's get you into college get some kind of degree out there and then we can work on that like you want to be an artist my daughter wants to be an artist like hey i'm all for it but let's like still have a plan in place let's know how to like deal with money let's deal with finances first can you understand that she's working right now which i think it's a really good program is the dave ramsey program for kids So we have three envelopes, which I highly, highly, highly suggest this. One is a save, one is a spend, and one is a charity. So she gets $5 a week for her chores. That's just the minimum. If she does more, she gets more. If she does less, no, she gets less. $1 always goes into the give, so the charity. $2 always goes into the spend and $2 always goes into the save. And maybe with like less than half a year, she's got a hundred dollars like in each one because she's bought a few items. She's also given to some charities that she's chose. Like I don't tell her how to spend her, her give money. It's just money that she is going to give out and give away. But before we did that program, We would send her with like five bucks to go get some Rosper ice cream for herself and her brother. And she would go to the ice cream man or the ice cream lady. She would get a popsicle. She would get a Rospa and the popsicle was for her brother. And, you know, me and my wife didn't want anything. She would come back. We'd ask for the change. And she said, no, I just got this. Um, I told her she can keep the change as the tip. And that was like, for me, that was like the most mind boggling thing where it's like, I'm not used to giving a, a ice cream lady a tip. I have, but not like a 50% tip. And, and that's when I was like, you know what? Like we're doing her a disservice because my wife and I were not taught how to handle money or finances. So that, that kind of stuck with me. That was like burned in my head now. Like, all right, yeah, we got to stay on top of this. And so ever since then, now, like we hear her say like, Ooh, I don't know if I should buy that. That's this much money or Ooh, you know, I want to buy this. And now when she's searching, she does want to be an artist. She's really good. She's also selling some of her stuff right now, which selling more than I've ever sold stuff for at 12 years old. But she is, uh, she's selling her art. Shout out, shout out Rona. And then shout out Larry for buying some pieces of her art. That was, that was really appreciative. Uh, from her and myself and my wife so we do appreciate y'all thank y'all and she she now she when she's searching to buy something on amazon she'll spend two to three days searching for a pin that's not only going to do what she wants it to do but that's also the most cost effective one for her because she did spend about 20 bucks on a pad that, that she chose and it does not work with any of the computers that we have it does not work with an ipad and she chose it and it's twenty dollars that we did not give back to her because we let we allowed her to buy it so she's also understanding how to how to use money because now she's got basically a brick that she can't use for anything and so different things like that like she's putting in some work and it's just so mind-boggling to me right now that nobody really wants to invest. And so if you guys have any kind of feedback for that, I'd love to hear it in the comments or somewhere. But I, I do know on one aspect, to be the devil's advocate here, why would you want to spend a, a year somewhere where you're just miserable? Why would you want to spend five years of your life somewhere just miserable? And granted, if you are miserable, hey, dip out. It's deuce. Bye. I'm not going to be somewhere miserable. 100% agree. 
but where where is the line for that like where are you gaining experience where are you trying to to create some more opportunities for yourself where are you trying to grow where are you trying to learn because if you're not doing it at this job is it a job problem or is it a you problem and and that's what i'm kind of wondering how should we start teaching our children to where hey let's stick it out but let's not stick it out to where it's miserable hey let's put in some work but let's not put in work and not get noticed hey let's continue to grow but let's not grow and not develop in a way that's not conducive to like a good conscious mind body and soul so like finding a balance of all of that and that's cliche right find find the balance guys but finding a balance to all that like where where exactly is the line is there a line is it different for every person because i feel like it's different for every person but there's got to be a place somewhere where you can work and build up on yourself and grow and mature and level up and not just in a job title but yourself because we all mature we all grow we all have experiences we learn from one another we discuss all of these things show us different things in life as we progress and get smarter because we should we should always be getting smarter we should always be learning and cindy cindy told me and my wife the other day she's like oh man i want to do this for school um next year and i said like hey there's a bunch of summer classes we you know you could have taken i just didn't sign you up for Oh, look, there's a few that you can. She said, uh, yeah, no, I don't want to do any of those. I don't want to ever learn anything in, in summer. And I said, Cindy, that's a good way to be poor. And she's like, what? <laughs> and and I don't know if I was joking at the time. And then I kind of like reflected on it a little bit. But like if we do stop like trying to learn anything, like would that not hinder us? Would that not make us? not able to learn more and granted there's there's exceptions to every single rule but i was wondering is is that a rule that if we stop learning like we're not going to go anywhere further like if we just stop doing if we're just content with everything that we have is it going to stay the way it is or is it going to go downwards and i, I want to know like where is the work ethic everywhere because right now, one thing I can see is like, hey, pay's not matching what we think work should be matching. But then we also go back to people like my grandmother who was literally in fields picking cotton to get money when she had a family. So like that wage, I would say, did not match what she was doing. Super manual labor versus you know somebody like in an office now just hammering away depending on what they're doing right like it it all depends but it's so crazy because like supply and demand for jobs there's people out there that are willing to do some jobs there's people out there that are getting paid way too much for other jobs and then there's people that are just getting by you know and and where where is the work ethic and all that like where's the balance is there a balance is there such thing as that is there such thing as finding and growing every single day? Does that really exist or is that just a myth? Like all these things have just been wrapped around my head lately um, just because of the everything going on, right? COVID's going on. It's impeding any kind of working in any kind of situation. It's really hard to find a job that's in like a social environment because all, all these constraints and all these, these, these COVID restrictions and all these like health concerns that we have because of COVID going on. So it's hard to find jobs like that because before COVID the, the, you could find a job socially anywhere. It was easy. There's, there's so much like hospitality jobs out there. And now, now it's crazy because you can't find, it's hard to find a good job now, right? Pay is really low. Uh, I see a lot of places that let's take the movies. For instance, the movies are like trying to bounce back right now. And they're offering $500. I know in the San Antonio era, area, Santico's movie theater was offering a $500 bonus after you've worked for, I think it was 90 days to their employees. So a job that I've never seen have a bonus offer $500 to $1,000 depending to kids who are like 
in high school. So like high school people would usually take those kind of jobs. So a thousand dollars when I was in high school, oh my gosh, that would go a long way. That would go a long way back in the day. Um, cause like a hundred dollars, I remember making a hundred dollars a weekend and that would last me a month. And then I needed another hundred dollars for gas money. So like thinking now, like with inflation and everything from 10, 15 years ago, like, oh my goodness, like that would, that would be enough for me if I was in high school, just a bonus alone. But you're getting a job, you're gaining experience, you're gaining, you know, exposure to just different things, people, surroundings. I, I think it all matters. But that's it for me, guys. Uh, sorry, this was such a long rant about work ethic. I don't know. It's just been on my mind lately. I just wanted to kind of vent and get it out. Uh, I do have some interviews that I have lined up from a while ago. So if anybody is wanting to get on, just shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. All right, y'all. Do not put that on YouTube. You're listening to my husband talk a lot.